Hello, I'm Alan Stokes, Principal Investigator for the SIMS Initiatives. We are a digital humanities project of the University of South Carolina Libraries with funding from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our website, we are reading one of William Gilmore Sims's ghost stories throughout the month of October. Grayling, or Murder Will Out, is a part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At this point in the story, the assumed murderer of Major Spencer has just been apprehended aboard a ship bound for England. Calling on national loyalties, the Scotchman McNabb, along with some other British passengers, has been pleading with the English captain to not give him up to his American accusers. That brings us to part 16 of William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, A Murder Will Out. No gentleman, said the captain, you mistake your man. God forbid that I should give shelter to a murderer, though he were from my own parish. But I am no murderer, said the Scotchman. You look cursedly like one, however, was the reply of the captain. Sheriff, take your prisoner. The base creature threw himself at the feet of the Englishman and clung with, with piteous entreaties to his knees. The latter shook him off and turned away in disgust. Steward, he cried, bring up this man's luggage. He was obeyed. The luggage was brought up from the cabin and delivered to the sheriff's officer, by whom it was examined in the presence of all and an inventory made of his contents. It consisted of a small new trunk, which, if it afterwards appeared, he had bought in Charleston soon after his arrival. This contained a few changes of raiment, 26 guineas in money, a gold watch not in repair, and the two pistols which he had shown while at Joel Sparkman's campfire, but with this difference, that the stock of one was broken off short just above the grasp, and the butt was entirely gone. It was not found among his chattels. A careful examination of the articles in his trunk did not result in anything calculated to strengthen the charge of his criminality, but there was not a single person present who did not feel as morally, morally certain of his guilt as if the jury had already declared the fact. That night he slept, if he slept at all, in the common jail of the city. Chapter five. His accuser, the warm-hearted and resolute James Grayling, did not sleep. The excitement arising from mingling and contradictory emotions, sorrow for his brave young commander's fate, and the natural exultation of a generous spirit at the consciousness of having performed with signal success an arduous and painful task combined to drive all pleasant slumbers from his eyes. And with the dawn, he was again up and stirring, with his mind still full of the awful business in which he had been engaged. We do not care to pursue his course in the ordinary walks of the city, nor account for his employments during the few days which ensued, until in consequence of a legal examination into the circumstances which anticipated the regular work of the sessions, the extreme excitement of the young accuser had been renewed. McNabb or McLeod, and it is possible that both names were fictitious, as soon as he recovered from his first terrors, sought the aid of an attorney one of those acute, small, chopping lawyers to be found in almost every community who are willing to serve with equal zeal the sinner and the saint, provided that they can pay with equal liberality. The prisoner was brought before the court under habeas corpus and several grounds submitted by his counsel with the view to obtaining his discharge. It became necessary to ascertain among the first duties of the state whether Major Spencer, the alleged victim, was really dead until it could be established that a man should be imprisoned, tried, and punished for a crime. It was first necessary to show that a crime had been committed and the attorney made himself exceedingly merry with the ghost story of young Grayling. 
This has been part 16 of Will William Gilmore Sims's Grayling, A Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this mysterious tale. Or if you would like to read the full text of this story or any of the many other works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, Happy Halloween.